The next financial crisis is inevitably coming sometime in the future. How will Fundrise protect us, our investments, and their own company if such an event was to occur? Coming up. If you're new to the channel, my name is Trey, and I'm a stock, real estate, and crypto investor, as well as a swing trader. Please, if you enjoyed this video, click that like and subscribe button, and check out my entire Fundrise playlist down in the description below and up here. Now, let's get started. So I found an article, actually all the way from October 2017, and it was actually written by Ben Miller, the founder and the CEO of Fundrise. This article goes on to talk about all the means that Fundrise has already taken in order to protect its investors and their company during the next financial crisis. He goes on to summarize that he does that by not trying to time when the next financial crisis is gonna take place, but instead investing right from the start in properties and in projects that are intrinsically resilient to a downturn in the economy. The article then goes on to state that during the economic downturn such as stock market crashes or like the pandemic of 2020, Fundrise will not provide liquidity. So what does that mean? That means that you will not be able to sell your shares or to withdraw your money from Fundrise during those events. Now, a lot of brand new investors, a lot of unexperienced investors get turned off by that because they're, they're used to being on exchanges like Robinhood where you can buy and sell stock in a matter of seconds, no matter what the stock is. However, Fundrise operates completely differently. Whenever you invest in real estate, it takes time to buy, to develop, to rent, and then to sell that real estate. So because Fundrise is a real estate investment platform, the same should be expected. It's a long-term, five to 10 years or more investment, which will give you higher than average returns. The reason why a lot of brand new investors lose money when the stock market crashes or during a downturns in the economy is obviously because of the emotions. They're driven by their emotion. A lot of the times they put in more money they can afford to lose. And that is where the phrase comes from. The phrase goes like this, never invest more money then you are willing to completely lose. However, a lot of the times with brand new investors, they see an article online or they go on YouTube and there's some guru there saying that they made like, uh, you know, $13 million out of $1,000 in like three months. And the brand new investors get carried away by that. They get emotional. They want to, they feel like they're missing out on these crazy gains. And a lot of the times they put in all the money that they have. And when you do that, you become emotionally vulnerable. You keep checking the stocks every single minute or second of the day. And that's also very unhealthy for you as a person. You're constantly stressed. And the minute there is a crash, you completely freak out. You don't know what you're doing. God forbid you put your life savings into the certain uh, investment and all out of nowhere, it is crashed by 80%. Now, this happens a lot with cryptocurrency, uh, among other things. This investor then becomes an emotional mess. The, he, um, he or she has no more money to add into the position in order to dilute their average price, which is another reason why you should always have more money sitting on the side and you should never go in with 100% of the money that you want to invest. You dollar cost average in because if the stock continues to sell off you're able to buy it at a lower price given that you still think that it's a good company and it will recover you want to put in more money in order to dilute your average buying price however uh, these brand new investors become an emotional mess and a lot of the time they sell at the worst possible 
time. So the stock market is crashing and let's say it crashed by 20%. So the, the that investor is still holding 40%, still holding, then it hits 80%. Now at that time, then that brand new investor is a complete emotional wreck. He might end up, God forbid, he might end up homeless because he will not be able to make his rent or mortgage payment in a desperate attempt to even save any money that there is left from that investment he or she sells and most of the time it's at the worst possible time and it's at a complete bottom that's where another expression comes from and it's a funny one buy high sell low and it is the complete opposite of what we want the brand new investors unexperienced investors a lot of the time they buy high and they sell low they sell at the complete bottom and guess what three to six months down the line the price recovers and then they look at the charts and they think if i was just hold through it if i was to just hold through it and if i wasn't emotionally invested and if i didn't have 100 percent of the money that i'm willing to invest invested at that one time i would be able to recover my losses and even make money at that point. That happened a lot during the pandemic and that happened a lot during the financial crisis of 2008. So essentially that's what happens. And a lot of the time people that um, critique Fundrise for not allowing them to withdraw their investment during the stock market crashes and downturns, they're unexperienced investors because they wanna trade in and out uh, just like it's on Robinhood. But essentially what Fundrise is saying here that they will take it upon themselves to protect uh, your investment, to protect you, but as well as to protect their company. They will not let you sell at the complete bottom during the crash and that is a good thing so now if you're thinking that is a bad thing that is some sort of control you should not be investing in real estate to begin with because it is long term if you want to trade in and out of stocks go to Robinhood or E-Trade and you could trade all you want over there if you want to be part of Fundrise you're going to dollar cost average in on the monthly or weekly basis and you're going to hold it for 5 to 10 years another reason why Fundrise will not be providing liquidity during a uh, financial crisis is because the fact is is that a lot of the gains and a lot of the wealth is made during these financial crises and unfortunately most of it is made by sophisticated professional investors in big corporations and investment banks because what they do is that is instead of selling at the bottom they actually buy more at the bottom right they buy a little bit here a little bit here a little bit here and then they dollar cost average their way all the way to the bottom and then they ride that wave back up now if fundrise was to just give out all of their um, all of the all of their investment money they would not be able to invest more when the price is cheap for certain um, real estate like during the coronavirus epidemic the price of real estate fell by about 15 percent and because fundrise didn't allow its investors to withdraw the money they were able to buy some cheap commercial and residential real estate and now that is why uh, during the third quarter of 2021 we're seeing 22 percent return because they were smart they did their research and instead of selling at the bottom like a lot of people do because they're be because they become an emotional mess fundrise invested even more money they got a lot of real estate at a discount because they had that money because they didn't have to give it away and now us as investors were benefiting from it in the third quarter of 2021 with a 22.7 percent return we're looking at 30% return in 2021 if everything goes uh, right. If you think you may need liquidity from your investments with us during the next financial crisis, then Fundrise long-term illiquid real estate strategy is probably not a good fit for you. Though none of us want to see another financial crisis, that doesn't mean that we should blind ourselves to the inevitable. If we prepare for it accordingly, it may turn out that the stability of our portfolio combined with our broad base of long-term investors actually creates new opportunities 
not available to most others in the market. Now guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please click that like and subscribe button and check out my entire Fundrise playlist down below. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.